Okay, so hello everyone. Um, today we're going to talk about how we built in Akamai a unified and scalable CI CD. Um, my name is Tomar Patel. I'm uh, at Akamai for four years now as senior engineering manager in charge of uh, DevOps team, uh, big data team, and full stack. Um, please raise your hand if you'd li you like uh, turtles or snails in general. Okay, nice. Me too. But it depends how, because this is how it looked like our CI CD up until a year ago, uh, which was very tedious, very, uh, very slow, didn't work well, and until the production came up, um, it took a lot of time and effort. So, what is our agenda? Our main agenda is to talk about who we are as Akamai. Um, we're not just CDN, so you'll see it. Uh, our CI CD the flow itself, and of course, what are the, uh, the takeovers and action items that you can take out of here. So what is Akamai? As I said, Akamai is not only in CDN. Um, this Akamai is also a security uh, company and uh, Akamai Connected Cloud. We have, uh, we're also a cloud company. Um, this is our global uh, spread. You can see that we're all across the board uh, with the edge and the, the Akamai Connected Cloud as well as um, as well as in the application security um, you can see we're really scalable we're talking about 40 billion bots a day attacks and 780 million uh, app attacks and even more than that and it's increasing all the time uh, each day and day and even uh, during um, every year so what is our dna when i'm talking about the dna is my group's dna uh, we, all, we have over uh, 97 million lines of code. We're talking about 120 uh, engineers. Uh, we're working in uh, Spark, Java, um, Scala, Python, Node.js. Uh, all the team is com complex out of uh, developers, QA, uh, operations, uh, performance engineers because, because of the scalability. Uh, and we run uh, on multi-regions, multi-clouds and in different cloud uh, resources just such, such as uh, Postgres, Kafka, uh, Databricks, uh, all, all, all of this. So what, what were our problems when we first launched and went into this uh, thinking of the new CI CD? Uh, because we didn't have any. Um, we had long deployments. We were talking about deployments that took over uh, weeks. And this is like an enterprise company. So this is why a lot of headaches. Uh, we had a lot of bugs during these deployments. Uh, we worked a lot manually and communicated with other team members, and this was a difficult one. Um, and we didn't have history. So for example, when I deployed something to production, I didn't know what was deployed, what, what, what happened, and so on and so forth. So when talking about the solutions on how we want to see it uh, in the future, we talked about short cycles. I want to uh, deploy every, uh, every hour, for example. I don't want this boundary. I, want, I don't want any manual work. I want to take it uh, out of the uh, developers, out of the engineers, and I want to automate it. Um, and I want to save um, cost and um, uh, save or focus on the core values of the team members themselves, not about the deployments, but rather about the coding, about the product, about uh, all the other stuff. And of course, I want to audit it so I can look back afterwards. So I know this is intensive, but you can see that uh, this is our CI CD, um, what our, our stack, let's say. Uh, it's covered here, and you see a lot of uh, uh, open source uh, projects that we, we do use. So we're leveraging both open source and non-open source um, uh, things in, in our ecosystem. Great, so our CI CD will focus on, uh, on high level on this flow. First of all, all the things or all the, the work up until I open APR. This is the local deployment or local development. Then we're fo we'll focus on the de uh, deployment process. It's from the opening of the PR until it's in production. And this is split into uh, two phases. One is the release itself of the code, and the other one is the configurations because each deployment has, of course, co configurations and a lot of FedEx uh, uh, with it. So let's focus about the local deployment or development. What, what is, was the concept of thinking about the local development and deployment was uh, 
to create a temporary environment or temporary ecosystem for our engineers uh, to test it in lower environments. So what were the problems? We talked about the, the problems that we had delays, people are waiting for uh, merges, uh, reviews and stuff, and it takes a lot of time. And we want to test it as soon as possible to reduce this uh, uh, effort and communication between the team members. So the solution is to create a temporary environment unique to the engineers that we have. What are the key features for that? So of course, when we develop an application, it's not only an app. It has uh, resources such as a Kafka, a database, uh, storages, and whatsoever. So this, this is one of the key features. The second one I want to be notified about. So I, know, I don't need uh, to go inside to, the, um, to, to those links and check and, and everything. I get it as a notification. So we work in WebEx, so this is in WebEx. We also have history on what we deployed. And uh, we also want to uh, uh, check our local code. So therefore, we used DevSpace for uh, uh, pushing this uh, local code or snapshots from locally into a Kubernetes. And what are the benefits? Oh, yeah. So what are the benefits? I think you, uh, you can see uh, from here. Uh, as I said before, it's fast uh, testing. Uh, we increase the productivity. And of course, uh, we uh, mitigate the risk because we test it in lower environments or in my environment and not in uh, QA or other uh, environments as follows. So what is the architecture? So it's each engineer that wants to uh, have his own local um, local deployment or, or local ecosystem, uh, it creates one. And each one of them has a new namespace. You can see my, name, my uh, namespace, my namespace two. Um, and this is with a unique name, so you can check it, uh, afterwards what, uh, what, what I deployed into that. So for example, I'm testing or uh, working in my uh, application. The application is called App A. Um, and th this application interacts with other applications. So for example, a app D, app C, app B, and of course a database and Kafka and all those stuff. Um, so when I, I test the, the, the app A in a real environment in Kubernetes, I want to test it with all this ecosystem. And as part of that in parallel, we also have a Vault, Argo CD, Prometheus, Grafana, um, Keda, everything is part of this uh, architecture. So this on the right is just an example uh, as part of it. So once I want to test app A uh, from locally, I deploy it, uh, deploy it using a dev space and then um, I can test all this environment in my namespace. I'll show you a quick uh, demo, how it looks like. So we have a Jenkins job. I can upload a YAML file with all the configurations. It's a one file configuration. Or you can have templates, for example, for each squad or team or uh, use case. Oh, sorry for that. Yeah, we'll start. Yeah, so you can see that um, uh, it can, we, we can pull it out from the dropdown. Uh, we can upload. Yeah, and then there is a, the, the build process. We talked about that we have uh, messaging, uh, uh, messaging in WebEx for notifying us. Uh, so you can see that as well. Oh, what happened here? Sorry for that. Uh, so we have a uh, WebEx message. We have validations on the YAML file to see that we don't uh, have any issues with that. And yeah, and this is how it looks like uh, the code itself of the YAML of the configuration. We have the bucket permission. We have bucket. We have Kafka. Uh, all the config map of the, the app itself. And we publish an HTML with all the links uh, uh, related to this uh, architecture. So for example, you'll see soon, we have the secrets involved, we have the uh, Argo CD application direct link, the Kafka topics as part of it, uh, and of course, to see the YAML file on GitHub as well. Yeah, so this is part of the Argo CD, you can see. And uh, we also have a, a TTL, so this is for example, uh, three hours, but uh, the engineers can extend it by um, restart the TTL. And afterwards, at the end, we're just deleting all the environment, all this namespace as is. So we talked about the local deployment or local de development. Let's talk about the, uh, the core uh, thing of the CI CD, which is uh, from opening the PR, 
uh, until uh, production. And we'll focus on the, the app release itself. So I know it, maybe it will be a, a little bit difficult uh, to, uh, uh, to, to uh, think about it, but uh, let's start with that. So we're a developer opens APR, it opens APR to master branch. Uh, we're not having any other uh, branches. It's just, just a feature branch or hotfix branch, and he opens it uh, to master. Then we create a JIRA ticket. Uh, the JIRA ticket is for auditing. I'll show you afterwards how the JIRA ticket uh, behaves and how we can track it for auditing later on. We lock the source branch, so we won't have any issues uh, with other engineers at the same branch or the same engineer wants to uh, publish another update to this branch. And then we run um, and build and scan our code. So we have Dust and SAS tools, uh, and I'll show you afterwards, uh, such as SonarCube, uh, BlackDuck, and uh, we have cities that runs as part of it, um, as part of the, the uh, CI CD. Then uh, we tag as, uh, as a, new, a new version of this uh, process, and we push this image into a, an ACR or Arbor. Arbor is like a fallback as availability, so we have both. And we're in a waiting phase because in this phase, we ran all the necessary requirements for the first or initial part. Uh, we ran the, uh, the tests, we ran uh, uh, all the scan code uh, tests and all those stuff and created the ticket. And now we need the approvals. So which approvals are a must in order to deploy it because we're talking about in our use case with big scale uh, uh, components. Uh, when I'm talking scale, I'm talking about ingesting, for example, between 10 to 14 gigabits per second. And this is each, uh, let's say, feature or stuff can impact the whole process. Uh, so the approvals are QA, one, one QA, one uh, developer can be a team lead or, or, uh, or a developer, um, and the performance engineer. Performance engineer is part of our squads that, that we, have, uh, we have. And there is a toggle, I'll show you afterwards what is the is major part, and that, then that's it. When all the three members uh, approve the, the PR, this is promoted to QA. And you need to remember that we opened the PR, or, and, but we tested uh, before that uh, this feature in our temp environments. So this is a critical part as part of this process. Uh, so yeah, so we promoted to, uh, uh, to QA. The image is promoted. Uh, we upload it using uh, Argo CD. If it's a new application, we'll end it. This is another process. I won't get into it. Uh, into these details right now. But this, if it's an existing application, we will deploy it to the QA environment and we'll run a couple tests. Uh, for example, we have flow test for regressions. Um, for each application, we have a flow test because uh, uh, this is a must and we have a lot of pipelines in our uh, workflow. If the test uh, fail, we revert it from QA so other uh, deployment can, uh, can be promoted. Uh, for example, uh, if I'm working and another engineer works at the same application, this will be promoted afterwards. We have sort of a queue. Uh, if it's passed, uh, this is great. We're in QA. And now we want to promote to our performance environment. Performance environment for our use case is uh, the staging environment. This is where we do all the load testing, the stress testing, and the performance. Um, and then we promote to performance. The promotion is, of course, copying the image from a QA uh, to performance ACR in Arbor. And we're, um, we're going to the performance uh, phase. So we talked about this major toggle. We, we, have, we had a use case where uh, the performance engineers, when we have a big, big or, um, features for, that we need to test them, and maybe can impact the performance of, the, of, of Akamai, of the, the workload that we have, uh, the performance engineers can mark whether it, this is a is major or not uh, feature. If this is a is major feature, they want to test it manually. Uh, this won't take a lot of time, uh, but it takes more time than uh, automating it. So if it's, uh, the toggle is major is false, we're deploying it to our performance environments and then run automated tests as part of that. Um, if it's passed, great, we'll, we'll continue to production. Um, on the other side, if the is major true, we're also running the automated tests, but we're running um, as well the, uh, uh, the manual tests, and this is sent by uh, WebEx notifications to, to the performance engineers group uh, or space, and also they have a dedicated 
uh, place in uh, backstage. I'll show you afterwards how it looked like. Great, so we moved on from performance. Let's go to production. So how we move to production? We merged the PR. This is in just this case, and this is why it's in yellow. Just in this case, after it was uh, in the QA and performance, we merged the PR. Why? Uh, this is critical, uh, uh, critical point. Uh, because, for example, we have hotfixes and we have uh, other things uh, that have uh, more priority and we want to merge it at the last uh, stage that we can. If it's failed with conflict, we will resolve it and go back, not go back to, uh, to QA. We'll go back um, to this phase. And if it's passed, we uh, starting the production setup, which means promoting again to uh, the Arbor uh, and ACR of production. And we have Argo rollouts that I will um, talk about it later on in another slide. And of course, sending notifications in the WebEx. So we talked about the auditing in the, um, in the ticket, in the Jira ticket. You can see that the Jira ticket has a lot of things uh, as part of it. We have the history, the visibility, the approvals themselves, the owners, the links. This is a lot of things that um, there are critical parts as part of enterprise to see and go back and see what was the issues, what, uh, what happened, and we can uh, mitigate uh, those um, afterwards. So this is uh, part of that. And we also attach all the relative uh, links, for example, Jenkins build, uh, GitHub, uh, the configurations themselves, uh, and many more, and also the scanning. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you can see all the, also the subtasks. The subtasks are for the configurations. We'll cover it afterwards. And of course, as I said, everything is audited. So we audit every row. For example, the promotion, the approvals, uh, and so on and so forth. We also updated the Jira workflow. So maybe I'll go back a little bit. Yeah, you can see that we have release ready, for example. Um, and if I go to the Jira workflow, you can see that it's a little bit uh, uh, intensive uh, to read, uh, but we went through the release process, so I guess um, it's fine to move on. Uh, we talked about the vulnerability scanning, so we have all this covered as well. We run SonarCube as part of the, the, the process. We run the burp suite for uh, DAS tool, WISC for scanning the envir uh, environments themselves, and everything is automated. We, we launch uh, uh, tickets as part of that and uh, add, it, add the, the necessary uh, info uh, as part of the ticket. And we also run Black Duck. So we cover all the layers of, uh, of the scanning in this process. We talked about also the WebEx notifications. So you can see, for example, um, this for uh, approvals, for notifying us, what is the phase where it stopped, and so on and so forth. So I, they don't need to, the engineers don't need to log into the ticket or need to uh, see it, they get it as part of the process itself. Um, we talked about all this, uh, wait, maybe I'll go back. Yeah, we talked about all the, all the process, but you know, we're not uh, in, in, uh, in the, the happy world, let's say, or the happy path. There are sometimes that uh, we need to have hotfixes. Uh, to our deployments. So the hotfix is the same as the usual deployments that we have. Uh, and this is the critical part why we're merging to master only uh, after, uh, after the perf uh, approval, the performance approval, and we don't have any issues with, with conflicts uh, in this matter. What happened when we have also common library? So we also support this as part of that. Uh, we first of all have the base component. The base component is uh, the one that uh, is the common library. So we open a PR to master, we run the build in cities, we uh, push the, uh, the version and waiting for approvals. Uh, once it's uh, solved, we're uh, opening uh, PRs automatically for all the other applications. So uh, all the child, child components that, uh, that derive from that, uh, we also open for them to master and then they run the CI CD but with, with lower priorities. We talked about priorities, so uh, this is in the lower priority, the common library, then we have the regular, and on top of that, we have the hotfix, which gets the, the most um, priority in, in the queue. Um, yeah, so let's talk about the deployment strategy. So each and every app in our uh, 
in our, in our uh, world, let's say, uh, is different. So therefore, we need a different rollout for, for that because one is a Spark streaming application, one is a batch application, one is uh, a spring, um, very different use cases. So therefore, we have uh, different app types uh, of deployments. Uh, part of them, they have blue-green, Canary, and the default one. And we have a sort of a, a queue for deployment. Uh, and if the, the window is closed, we're not deploying. Why it's good? Because as an enterprise company, we all, all the time have holidays, weekends, moratorium, and we can deploy uh, in those uh, periods. Now we talked about the release process, but let's talk about the configuration, because as I said, the configuration are in parallel to the release itself. Great, so which configurations we have today? Uh, we have three main configurations types. We have the Argo, CD, app configurations, the config maps um, that I think most of you use. We have the complex app configurations that are sort of files, so JSON, YAML, um, and so on. And we also have the Terraform provisioning uh, uh, configurations, if it's a Kafka storage, um, as three buckets, Redis, Postgres, and many more. So what, what was the problem with the configurations up until now before the CI CD that we had? Uh, all the configurations were manually and they weren't audited. So I didn't know if these configurations impacted the deployment or not. We didn't have backups and of course we didn't have validation. So I can, for example, I upload a JSON file and the JSON file wasn't uh, good enough um, and it failed all the, the application itself and this wasn't good. So the, the solution was to go or work with the, the configuration as a CI CD itself. The same, treat, the same treatment that uh, we work with the, the application itself, also with uh, the, the, the configurations. So what are the phases? We're talking about the deployment of the configurations, the validations, the auto deployment into the environment, creating the, the tags, and re refresh those uh, configuration tags and uh, the deployment. So we talked about the three different ones. We have two, uh, this is an example. We have two different repos. Uh, one repo is for the Argo CD and the configuration files and the other one is for the Terraform provisioning. Um, we have even more hierarchy uh, in this uh, repos because we're, as I said before, we're working in uh, multi-region, multi-cloud and um, and m many apps with the same images, for example. So uh, everything is with the code ownership and uh, this is the two main repos that we have. As part of that, we are open, we're opening a, uh, a CI-CD uh, ticket with the subtask that we saw before, you can see it even below, for QA, perf, perf manual, and also production. And on the right side, you'll see all the, uh, the process that we just talked about. The validation, the, the, the apply, the tag, and also the release afterwards. Great, so, okay, how we measure, how we have KPIs, how we can see all those stuff, how, how we can go uh, deep through and see all those uh, insights as part of the CI CD. Um, we are using, I think I mentioned that, we are using Backstage uh, for leveraging our visibility on our CI CD. Um, so you can see here, we have all the tickets, we have the graph, I can click in each and every one of those blue buttons and I can see all the uh, tickets in each phase, where it failed, where it stuck, where I need approvals, um, and that's it. We talked about also the manual workload or work of the performance engineers, so they also have the backstage uh, uh, here for them, they can uh, merge them and, and approve from this, uh, uh, this visibility um, page, and this is critical because just for using this, let's say, uh, layout in, in our backstage, we reduced a lot of time uh, of the performance engineers and the CI CD itself. And we also run uh, Datadog for the full CI CD pipeline because we're running in Jenkins, so it's uh, running uh, automatic as part of that. So we covered from PR to production. What we had before, we had deployments that occurred uh, every couple of weeks um, and time to market was very slow because customers wanted the uh, hot fixes, wanted fixes, wanted the features and took time. 
And now we're talking about multiple times a day that we uh, deploy to production. It's a faster time to market and of course cost reduction because as I said before, we're testing it before we're deploying into production. So what's next as part of the, uh, of the CI-CD? We want all the time to improve the reliability and the performance of our CI-CD. Uh, add more KPIs and metrics we do have, but we want to add more so we'll, we'll, we'll see where, in which teams they uh, take much more, in which uh, uh, type of application it takes more to deploy to production. Uh, we want to run the CI-CD on, on, on the Terraform and all the uh, DevOps workload. Uh, and we started to also work on the ML ops uh, for LLM ops and also for uh, serving uh, ML models. So the, the convention will be the same in general. Of course, it won't be the same. So what are the call, call to actions? So don't be afraid of changes. I came to this, uh, uh, th like I think like uh, an year ago and I said, okay, we have a lot of changes. We must change something. Many people said, said to me, you're crazy. What are you doing? Uh, people w won't work with it. Um, so don't be afraid. This is the first uh, uh, call, call to action that uh, I recommend. Uh, try all the time to uh, improve. Um, this, is, uh, this is important. We went to this project as, as a startup mode uh, and agile. So work and, and do some small uh, quick wins for you and identify uh, the pains from all the team members. So we had a lot of discussions, I think about above 20, 20 or 30, with uh, different stakeholders. So for example, managers and ops, QA uh, performance. Leverage uh, open source, don't reinvent the wheel. There is a lot of big community here, um, and this is really important to uh, uh, speed this up. And of course, when you have a CI CD, you need also to have uh, a culture that supports it. Culture from the en engineering. So uh, this is also important as part of it. If you remember, we talked about snails uh, and turtles. Uh, so our phase right now is Formula One with Ferrari. Uh, this is our delivery and I think this is what we, uh, we wanted to go into. Um, yeah. And of course, we also have a booth in B2 downstairs, so meet us there. Uh, Zakama, and we have a lot of other uh, speaks today and tomorrow. That's it, pretty much. Yeah. decision to have a separate repo for the Terraform um, configuration as opposed to storing it next to the app. Yeah, because Terraform is a different, uh, we wanted to separate it for, uh, uh, because of the different roles that we have in, uh, um, in, in our group, and it was uh, more easier to uh, manage it. So for example, uh, a provisioning uh, Kafka, for example, it was uh, for ops more, oh, yeah. Uh, it was more for the operations team and so on. So it was more of, uh, um, let's say, restrict, uh, let's say, boundary of, uh, of uh, owner, ownership um, because of the team. So more ownership as opposed to, is there a pipeline that also runs, I'm assuming, but it's... It, yeah. So is it more of a one-time manual run pipeline as opposed to running every exactly. time? Exactly, yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Sure. Oh, hi, thanks for the talk. So uh, when you deploy to production, you mentioned that you guys have multiple clusters, like multiple regions, multiple clouds. Uh, do you go to like all clusters at once or do you have some sort of like orchestration? No way, uh, this is my dream, but uh, the operations won't allow me. Uh, so uh, this, this is also automated as part of the Argo rollouts. Uh, we first have uh, deployed it to, uh, let's say, um, not uh, active DC and then we deployed it to the, all the other ones at the same time. How does it work? The rollout is in cluster, like Argo rollout works within a single Kubernetes yeah, cluster? Yeah, so we, we have also, I didn't mention it here, we also have a wrapper on top of the Argo rollouts that manages it, the, the deployment of to production as well. So that, that's kind of a custom script that you guys? What, sorry? Like, is that a script or like what is the? What yeah, is a little bit, like? yeah. <laughs> okay, great, right, thanks. But you I'm mentioned sorry. having a, uh, a separate 
pipeline for deploying configuration. Yeah. Um, how do you manage a situation where configuration, perhaps like a breaking change, where configuration needs to go along with a new application version, um, where like you have a new property and it, you need to have the configuration, or perhaps a property change, something like that? You remember that we talked about the culture and mm -hmm. how we need, you need to adopt. So this is part of the culture. Uh, if you need to, uh, for example, to deploy a new configuration, so first of all, deploy the configuration without the, the application itself. Deploy it, and in the app itself, you will, uh, you will deploy the app itself afterwards, after the, the configuration. Okay. So this is part of the culture that, uh, that, that we need to uh, maintain uh, as part of the CI-CD. Okay, thank you. Sure. Yeah, sorry. Uh, you mentioned a dependency map uh, between, you know, kind of related to what the other person said. Uh, is it some separate JSON file, your own custom format, or do you use some standard to say, oh, this application depends on this configuration? Yeah, so usually the, 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 the dependency between uh, applications should not apply as part of your deployment. Okay, you sh it, it shouldn't impact. So uh, this is the first, uh, the, the first thing that we also mentioned to the engineers. If you deploy a feature, it should not impact other, other things. And you can deploy with feature flags. So this is part of the, what the engineers are also doing, uh, that, that we're doing. Okay. So yeah, so no, I hope that I answered the question. So. The, there's no dependency map separately, is that uh, what I'm hearing, that there's no application A, it depends on configuration in this repo and that repo, you don't store that. Map. Yeah. Oh, you mean the, the the dependency on the configuration files? Yeah, and it could be libraries, it could be applications, anything. Yeah. Yeah. So this is also, uh, of course, this is a little bit uh, difficult to manage, and this is why we're also testing it in the temp environment, so you can test it beforehand, and also the deployment itself, we're testing it in in the lower environments as well. So uh, this is part of the process that we we talked about during the. I hope I answered. Maybe you can, we can talk afterwards. Okay, thank you. Sure. Nice presentation. Uh, two quick questions. Uh, for the is major, is it automated built based on the config path of which files were changed, or is it like a tag that the developer adds in the PR? And the second question is, could you talk about the scalability and the HA of your build server? Of the, the scalability of what, sorry? Of the Jenkins, like your builds, build servers? Yeah, uh, we're talking about a uh, huge uh, scalability. Um, where our Kubernetes clusters are 300 nodes. We have a couple of them. Uh, and about the scalability itself, we're serving and we have multiple pipelines that one of the biggest ones are, as I said, 10 to uh, 14 gigabits per second. Uh, and it's just increasing over time uh, because of the security events that happen in the world um, and the malicious attacks. Uh, for the first question, maybe if you can repeat it. Sorry. Yeah, for the ease the measure, because depending on if it's ease measure, like that tag. Oh, the ease measure, yeah. Yeah, so is it like an automated, like based on which files were changed, it automatically decides it's is, is, is major or it's like a tag that you added in the PR? Yeah, maybe, sorry that I didn't mention that. Uh, sorry that I didn't, didn't mention that. Uh, basically, in the ease major part, this is part of the approval of the perf engineer. It comments in the PR itself, uh, is major. And we automate it. We know exactly what he mentions. Thank you. Sure. Hey, Tomer, thank you for this. Um, Time-wise, either calendar time or just uh, uh, full-time employees, how long did it take you to get from zero to where you're at today? Where, well, this yeah, this is a good question. So we, I didn't mention it because I, didn't, I thought that I didn't have enough time. Uh, we, we went through this process as startup. Those engineers didn't do anything or bug fixes or any other stuff of, uh, as part of their DevOps operations. Uh, and they did just this. Uh, and this, it took uh, five, uh, five and a half months for, for completing. And the most critical part is, you know, is doing it agile, as I said, just improving over time. Give something uh, to set of uh, squads to work with, and then you, you see feedbacks, you get feedbacks, and you improve over time. Sure, sure. Um, so how many uh, engineers did you have working on that? On the CICD? Yeah, d during that five yeah, uh, months. Yeah, three engineers. Three, three engineers. Three engineers, yeah. All right. And gonna... just to let them know, don't do any other stuff. This is your take a room, let's say, or a virtual room, and work with that. 
<laughs> I'm going to try to beat you, but I don't think I can do it. That's pretty impressive. We can talk afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Were you doing any automated rollbacks? Load balancing? Automated? Roll ba rollbacks. Roll rollbacks? Roll yes, yeah. yes, of course. This is part of the Argo rollout. Yeah, sorry, I don't have enough time, so we can talk afterwards.